our language supply, very important concepts and diagrams for AS and A2 level economics. These are the key diagrams. So, if we start off, what is aggregate demand? It's the total expenditure in the economy, and aggregate demand equals all the consumption. You add up all the consumption, get the aggregate level of the consumption, which for the UK economy is about 60% of GDP. Investment in the UK economy is 20% of GDP, so investment is all added up. We add up all the government expenditure, such as uh, expenditure on the army, on police, NHS education. And then we have net exports, so it's all our exports minus our imports of goods and services. Um, for the UK economy, this is 60%, roughly 20%, roughly 25%, for half, which means that net exports is generally a small negative figure. Well, what's the aggregate demand line going to look like? Well, basically, as the price level falls, aggregate demand is going to slope downwards from left to right. So we're going to have a line like this that represents aggregate demand. Okay. Because as the price level lowers, for example, people will consume more, greater investment will take place. Now, the other line that we need to put on is this line here, which is short-run aggregate supply. Now, economists assume that in the short run, at least one factor of production is, is fixed in micro markets. And so in the whole economy, we add up the total supply, that's the aggregate supply, in the short run. And this um, would increase from left to right as the price level increases. Firms in the economy will want to supply more. So there's one magical point where aggregate demand will equal short run aggregate supply. And at this point here, at a certain price level, we have a level of output and a price level where the two match. And this is where the economy forms an equilibrium. This is where our output is at Y. Now what you need to be very clear about is what shifts each line. Any change in these components here and aggregate demand will shift. Any change in productive costs will shift short run aggregate supply. So, if we consider what would happen if consumption increases, say there's an increase in it, um, consumer confidence, so people spend more on the shops, there's lower interest rates, then consumption will increase. Um, Say there's a lower interest rates, investment may increase, or there's, a, or there's a, a business confidence increase, or government expenditure increases, or there's a change in exchange rates, or an expansion overseas may mean more exports, so net exports increases. So if, these, if, if any of these four components of aggregate demand increase, the aggregate demand line will shift to the right say from AD1 to AD2, here's AD2, and what we have is a new equilibrium is formed, and we shift from P1 to P2, okay, or Y1 to Y2 here, okay, we form a new equilibrium at this point here, um, and so output has increased, but at the same time there's been an increase in price level. So if you were analysing uh, whether this is a good thing, if consumption or investment were to increase and aggregate demand shifts to the right, then on the one hand output is increased, and most likely employment, which is a good thing perhaps, but we've got a problem with uh, a higher price level in the economy. Um, again, if um, there's a reduction in consumption, say because of higher interest rates or higher uh, income taxes, all other things being equal, aggregate demand would shift to the left, okay, to AD3, AD3 here, yeah, shift to the left, and again we move along the short run aggregate supply curve. Yes, supply will fall. And the common mistake to make is that a student may move short run aggregate supply when there's a change in aggregate demand. Think of it this way, what causes the fall in supply, it's a shift to the left of the aggregate demand line and therefore a movement along short run aggregate supply. So we're supplying less, 
at a lower price. Where new equilibrium forms at P3 and output at Y3. So, again, we benefit from lower inflation, perhaps, lower price level, but we suffer because output has fallen. So, aggregate demand here shifted to the left because of a fall in consumption or investment and or government expenditure and or net exports. A fall in each of these components will reduce aggregate demand and shift aggregate demand to the left. So, <coughs> what may cause a change in short-run aggregate supply? We need to be very careful about what causes a shift in each line. And here, if we've got aggregate demand and short-run aggregate supply here, so, again, we have the price level on the left, national income on the bottom. Remember, label your diagrams carefully, otherwise you may lose marks. So we're here, again, at the equilibrium, a certain price level and a certain output. Now, short-run aggregate supply corresponds to costs, to productive costs in the economy. If anything increases those costs, then short-run aggregate supply will shift to the left say to SRAS2, and we then move to uh, an equilibrium of a higher price level and a lower output. Okay, we move from Y1 to Y2. So the sort of productive costs that could increase are uh, an increase in what real wages, taking into account inflation, of course, um, an increase in the costs of capital, uh, um, an increase in oil prices or commodity prices, which feed through to the rest of the economy, these will shift short run aggregate supply to the left. Okay, and when we have a lower out equilibrium output. Uh, similarly, 